how to organise travel photos in Lightroom to save time later. Hi and welcome to episode 85 of the Photography Explained podcast. I'm your host Rick and in each episode I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes-ish without the relevant details. What I tell you is based on my lifetime of photographic experience and not Google. Episode 85 and I'm still reading it out like that. It doesn't sound much better does it? Before I go on, if you have a question you would like me to answer, just go to photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. This is take four now, so hopefully this time we'll get there. If you're listening to me saying take five, then I didn't make it, did I? Right, I'm not going to go through all ten things which I've got listed down here. I'm going to do the things one at a time. So number one is import the photos into my import folder in Lightroom. I mean, when I import photos... I've set up, there's 10 folders and number one, well, the first folder is one import and I import all the photos into there and Lightroom just chucks them into a folder on the date. And that's fine because I know where they are. I want everything consistent. I want my workflow to work for me. So I import every photo, which I sort before filing, into the import folder. And there is a reason for this. There's other ways of doing this. It's just the way that I do it. Number two, apply some processing on import. I mean, this isn't, This isn't organising, but it is saving you time later. This is the things that I used to do all the time to pretty much every photo. And at some point, I just thought, I can automate this. So when I import the photos, I do an amount of stuff. Now, I can't really explain this properly in an audio podcast, but if you check out my website, rickmacavoyphotography.com, you'll find some blog posts where I tell you what the settings are. Yeah, if you just go there and type Lightroom into the search box... It'll list a load of posts about um, Lightroom, funnily enough. Quite a few of those, I screenshotted the actual settings to help. As an aside, I also start the backup process on import, but that's one for another time. Three, quickly go through the photos and get rid of rubbish, duplicates and photos that I just do not want. Now, I do this quickly. Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you, having done this for many more years than I care to remember. And the quickest way to do this for me, and this is what I do is that I select the first image and then I scroll through the images using the right and left arrow keys. Right, so the first image, press the right arrow key. And if I don't want that first image, I just use the key X. The photo is designated as a reject, but importantly, is not removed from the catalogue. Four, select the photos that I like the look of quickly. Same as above, but rather than X, I hit P. This is anything that I like the look of that has potential. And my first pass in many, many times is all that I work with. Many times I just do that once and I never go back to it. If I'm not sure, I hit P. This is a quick first pass to narrow things down a lot. Number five, create a new folder in the worldwide section. I've got 10 main folders in my Lightroom catalog. One is called worldwide and I create a subfolder for each trip I go on within that folder. For my last trip to Paxos, the folder is called, wait for it, Paxos 2021. Yes, it can be that simple. Every trip I have ever been on has a subfolder in this section. It's taken me many, many years to get to this level of simplification. I've complicated things over the years so, so much. I came up with this file structure some years ago and I've never needed to change it. That's another one for a separate episode. That will be flagged under the boring but important episodes. Anyway, back to it. Number six, create a new subfolder in the new folder I've created called Paxos 21 called Pix. There's a reason for this, which I'll come on to, which I realised in my scripts I didn't. Number seven, so I will do now, don't we? Add the Pix to that folder. Number eight, create a new subfolder called All. Now, when I say pick or reject, I didn't say and I should have done. If I don't want something, it's rejected. If I definitely want something, it's a pick. And that leaves a load of stuff in the middle, which is neither one nor the other. And that is what goes in the all folder. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So I've got my subfolder called all, which I've created. And that is the photos that aren't picks or rejects and are rejects. Now, if you're confident with what you're doing, so number nine is add the rest to the folder called all. If you're confident with what you're doing, you can delete the rejected photos now, which means you've got less photos to move. If you're not that confident, you can just leave them flagged as rejects. So you know the rejects. And you can move them into the old folder and delete them later. Or never if you don't want to. You don't have to. It just depends how confident you are in doing this. 
I mean, I delete them. Once I've gone through and done my picks and my rejects, I just delete the rejects there and then. And let me tell you a little secret. I have never had to go back to a backup set to find an image that I deleted. Never. Then again, I do have the benefit of many, many years of experience of doing this. So if you want to keep the rejects for now, that's just fine. Remember that they're taking up hard drive space. And if you find that you're never going back to the rejects because you're happy with what you've got, you'll build up your confidence and you'll get to a point where you say, do you know what? I've rejected these. I'm getting rid. And every time you do that, you're making life easier for yourself in the future. Less data, less time things loading up, less storage space. OK, so what we got, we've got two subfolders. So we've got a folder for the trip called Paxos 2021. We've got a folder with pics. We've got a folder with everything else. That's it. It is that simple. There's no star rating. I don't do any of that. It's just a pick or it isn't. OK, so number 10, add all the pics to a collection and sync with Lightroom Mobile. OK, so the pics were a quick pass of anything with potential. Now I do this so I can look at the photos on my iPad at my leisure and decide which images I want to work on. Seven and a half minutes before the first stumble, I'm definitely getting better. This holiday has done me some good. Um, well, I'll, I'll reduce the number of images by removing some of the pick flags. And I do this on my iPad, wherever I am, mainly lying on the sofa with a glass of wine because I enjoy doing this. And glasses of wine give me a little bit more creative juice, if you like. <laughs> and once I've done this, I'll go back to Lightroom and move the photos which have had the flags removed to the All folder with all the other ones. Now, I won't have many photos in my pics folder. All I'll have in there is photos that I am prepared to invest the time to edit properly. The number will also vary with the purpose of the photos. If they're just holiday photos, that's one thing. But if they are for a specific website, like Paxos Travel Guide, that's another thing. Um, personal stuff and work stuff, different priorities. Number 11. And last, once back up and format the memory cards. I'm not going to go into backup in any detail here other than to say once I've completed my backup process where my images are in three places, one on an external hard drive, one on a hard drive stored off site and one in the cloud. That's the three places. I will then format the memory cards and put them in a case for the next trip and I format them in the camera. Right, so that is um, that's what I do. That possibly sounded a little more, bit, little bit more complicated than it actually is. It's quite slick once you get into it. So, what about phone photos? Now, I've got a bit more work to do here, and to be honest, I'm not that good at this. I should add my phone photos to Lightroom, really. But to be honest, I only use photos taken with a camera commercially, so for now, I'm okay with this. And what about metadata? I'm talking about keywords and all that stuff. Now, I don't bother with any of that until I'm sending the photo somewhere outside of Lightroom. Up until that point, I don't need keywords to find photos as my file structure has that sorted for me. What do I do? This is what I do. I actually do this on every commercial shoot as well. It, it's, it's my one work like It works for me. It's simple. I've never struggled to find an image since I had this system. Right then, the talky bit. I've been using Lightroom for many years. Well, since 2007, actually, when it was released. And I've spent many, many years complicating things. But for the last few years, I've been simplifying things, including my Lightroom workflows and my Lightroom catalogue structure. Now, I know it's dull talking about catalogues, but if you're in the position that I once was, then you'd have my sympathy. Sorry, if you're in the position that I was once, then you have my sympathy. I had thousands of unsorted photos in folders. I had loads of great photos, but I didn't know this as I couldn't see them. I literally couldn't see them. And it was when I couldn't find some photos that I had the realisation, the realisation easy for me to say that I needed to do something. And the solution was so simple. I just created a file structure the same way that I have done on my PC for my other stuff. At the end of the day, if you think about it, photos are no different from Word documents or anything else. They're just things that need organising. And once I got my nut round that and sorted this once and for all, I've never looked back. And knowing that my catalogue is super well organised, I do not want to clutter it up. So I sort things after import. And I think I said this earlier, I've never gone back to an old folder to get an image that I did not pick. I've sent photos from the pick folder the other way loads of times then. So it does, it does work. These days I have a folder for a trip with a small number of photos that I can edit, which is great. I used to get back from trips and never actually get around to editing the photos. I mean, how bad is that? Not anymore. I am very happy to report. What I had was about 15,000 photos, not just from holidays, trips and stuff, just from other stuff, just all sat in the import folder. And it just grew and grew and grew and grew. And I had endless rubbish in there. And one day I just bit the bullet and thought I'm going to sort 
all of this mess out. And I did. And I deleted thousands of photos that were either slight variations on the good one. Because what I used to do is I'd take one photo, I'd move about a foot to the right, take another one, a foot to the left, take another one. The first one was fine. And I actually spent the time and went through start to finish. And I got rid of thousands of photos. That's why I haven't got that many photos in my Lightroom catalogue, because I'm really, really harsh now with what I keep. And I don't take that many to start with. Right then, my one line summary. Organise your photos in Lightroom as soon as you can when you get back from a trip and save yourself loads of time and give yourself the luxury of being able to enjoy all those lovely photos. Blimey, what's next? Photography Explained Podcast, Episode 86. Help, how do I choose which travel photos to edit? That's um the logical follow-on from this one. I'm just going to talk about just picking photos to edit. Shout out, this shout out, this episode shout out. I've made a mess of the one all about me, haven't I? This episode shout out is to me. That's all. Just me. I'm done. Thanks for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast. To find out more about my podcast and do stuff to help me, check out photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. Well, this episode was brought to you by lots of coffee as I get back into the swing of things. I've had a month off recording and blimey, does it show. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much for listening to me and for giving me just less than 40 minutes of your valuable time. And I will see you on the next episode. I won't, will I? Because I won't see you at all. I don't know why I say that. Cheers from me, Rick.